Okay, let's build off this project I've already created here. Basically, as the user scrolls around here, they're gonna hit this little calculator. Instructionally speaking, this is kind of a nice spot that can further engage the learner by giving them some feedback on their actual information. In this case, we're asking them to type in how many sheets of paper they use a week, and we will tell them how many sheets that is in a year, and how many trees that equates to. Of course, this is just an example project, but a lot of companies have calculators and formulas that they have and you know, various things in their e-learning courses for finances, cost savings, savings on product use, and so on. I worked on a project once that calculated the savings of using autoclavable medical tools over the traditional sterilization methods, which was very, very helpful for people to be able to put in their own information and see what kind of results they get from that, what the benefits are. Anyway, whatever you need to do, you may want to consider using JavaScript to do it. It can save a lot of time and effort and reduce a hundred triggers down into just a few lines of JavaScript. And that's not an exaggeration. Seriously, I, I built a whole calculator once in, in Storyline. So many triggers, it was insane. And then for me to go back and make a little adjustment, it took me about two or three days. It was exhausting. Plus, there are some things like rounding numbers, adding commas, as I did in another project, even putting text strings together and searching through them. That's just stuff you can't do with triggers. Okay, so how do we build this? Just a little bit of setup. I have a, let's see, insert, input, numeric entry field here, and the variable is set to user input number. I have a calculate button for executing the JavaScript through a trigger, and I have a couple of variables. One for calculating the amount of paper each year, and one for the value of how many trees that is. I'm doing this in a layer, but anywhere you need it, create a trigger with the action execute JavaScript. For us, I want this to happen when you click this button. Uh, so this JavaScript window, which you can click these three little dots here. This is the JavaScript uh, window in Storyline. Uh, you know, it's not very exciting. Uh, it's just a big empty text box. In fact, I'm going to increase the text box size a little bit here so I have a little bit more space to work. Now one thing that's really good to know is that Storyline and the JavaScript window here, they don't automatically know each other, and therefore they don't automatically know each other's data. So we need to introduce the two so they can share information, so they can communicate. To do this, type in this, var player equals get player. You might wonder, how did I know how to type this in? Well, it's very easy. Search Storyline and JavaScript, and Articulate will tell you to type this in. I wouldn't have a clue otherwise. So again, this is setting us up to be able to communicate between JavaScript and Storyline. Now the user typed a number in here, and we want to be able to get that number into the JavaScript so we can do something with it. But we've only set up the communication between the two. JavaScript still doesn't know the variable Storyline has. I want the code I type in here to know that I typed a 10 in this box in Storyline. So I want to create a variable in JavaScript and set it to equal the Storyline variables. Because the two don't share variables, I'm going to create a unique variable in JavaScript and just name it the same as the Storyline variable, except I'm going to put a JS after each variable I create here, which will make it a lot easier for me at any time to look at this code and say, oh, that variable is in JavaScript, and the other ones would be in Storyline. So I will type var user input number JS to create a simple JavaScript variable. Then I will equal that to a Storyline variable which I do by typing player.getVar, you know, get var, get variable. So player.getVar, the variable user input number, I'll just type that in, whatever the variable that I'm trying to pull from Storyline will, will be typed in right here, and that's it. Now, the JavaScript variable here, user input number JS, will equal, let's say, 10 or whatever the user typed in here. So you might also wonder, how did I know how to type in player.getVar uh, well, same thing. I just uh, looked it up. Uh, Articulate tells me exactly what to, to do to pull in variable data from uh, Storyline itself. Okay, now time for a little bit of math. Let's create a new variable called save underscore uh, paper each year JS and equal that to user input number JS uh, or the 10 that I, let's say, I typed in here. And I want to multiply that by 52. You know, there's 52 weeks in a year so that this variable will equal 520. So 520 equals 10, which they will say they typed in, times 52. Then let's create a second variable and call it save 
trees each year JS. And equal that to the number of sheets a year. So save paper each year JS, or basically our 520 divided by 8,333, uh, which is the number of sheets of paper in a tree, which I should say I found on the internet, so I can't assume it's right. Uh, in fact, I should assume it's not right. Uh, but whatever, it's a, it's a demo. It gets the point across. So I, I did all my calculations here, but Storyline doesn't know these values yet. So in the same way I get variable info from Storyline, I can set Storyline's variables by typing player dot set var now instead of get var I want to set var the storyline variable and then the javascript variable same for save trees each year And now Storyline will have these calculated values in its own variables. And here, because the text box has this special code here, which will show what's in the variable, these numbers will just show up as what has been calculated. I should mention, though, that to view all this, to, to make sure this is all working, you do need to publish your project for the JavaScript to run. You can't do this through a preview. So again here, I type 10. And I will hit uh, Calculate, and we will see our results. Now, if you're not used to JavaScript, it can seem like a lot to look at. So I recommend giving this a try, and you'll see how easy it is to use. While these simple calculations can be done in Storyline using triggers, you can imagine a more complicated formula becoming more complicated using triggers. Let me jump back into this JavaScript box. Since it will store what you've written in this box, you can always jump back and edit it if you need to. Now, this would be a decimal here. If I want that to be a percentage, I can just multiply this by 100. Easy. Or say I want to round this. I can just type, uh, and actually I don't remember if I exactly know how to round in JavaScript. I think it's math.round like this. Uh, you might have to look me up there. And now I've rounded this. Something I really can't do with triggers. The JavaScript community is, is huge. So if you don't know something, you can just look it up. Lots of great training out there. And with that, I hope you consider using the Execute JavaScript trigger to add a little bit more to your course and a little bit more to your learner's experience.